What's going on YouTube? My name is Reyes and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be checking out It's so much worse than we thought and the thumbnail was Kawhi's injury So I don't know where he's going with this and it was a chart So maybe be talking about Kawhi's injury But without further ado, I, I'm you know, I'm kind of excited to check this out because I love Jimmy's video you know? I remember watching when he first started and he got so big Pause But yeah, without further ado, let's check out this video November 2nd, 1991. The Warriors oh, are facing wait, off against the November 2nd, 1991. Okay. The Warriors are facing off against the Kings in an early season matchup. Golden State is coming into the season as one of the top teams in the West and they're looking to make some noise early on. The Kings, well, the Kings are trash. In fact, the Kings were so bad that by halftime the Warriors had broken an NBA record that was sure to never be broken again. What was that? A 47 point lead by halftime. Oh, okay, okay. That's the, are we talking about the um the fifty point halftime lead that they had? Well, what team did the Clippers play? Oh, they played the Mavs. It was about it. Was, what was it? Seventy seven to twenty seven. That's wild, bro. Like, god damn. Points. This is disgusting. It's disrespectful. These men have families too, you know. But hey, uh, at least no other team has ever felt the humiliation and defeat that this poor Kings team felt on that November. No. Has the yep. We'll Until now. We'll That's three. crazy. Forgettable first half. The Dallas Mavericks lead 77 to 27. <laughs> Largest deficit wow. at halftime in the history of the NBA. Mm. My God. My God. How does this even happen? Down 50 points at halftime? Did the Clippers even show up? I mean, yeah. I get that Serge Ibaka gave Kawhi Leonard an elbow that would have made Ooh. The Rock proud, so he ain't playing. But the Mavs don't have Porzingis either, so on paper, this seems like a pretty even matchup. But, um, I guess not. Paul George? Yeah, he's there. Ibaka? Yeah, alright, let's analyze real quick. Paul George, 4 of 13. Ibaka had a solid game. You know, four of his five misses will be on the arc. But other than that, he didn't have a terrible game. Luke Kennard played horrible. I don't know what happened that game, yo. Yeah. Reggie Jackson, Zubats, Lou Will. Yep, the gang's all here. Well, I mean... They're here, but they didn't show up. Their entire starting five scored a whopping 41 points. That's not at the half, that's for the entire game. And if that's not unfortunate enough, this starting five, who combined for $240 million worth of- Nick Batum, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I thought this was per year. I was about to say, Nick Batum gets 30 mil a year contracts shot one for 19 from three that's five percent hey one buddy, for 19 you pay me a quarter of a billion dollars and i'll slap on a jersey so quick and shoot five percent from deep all season long <laughs> just tell me where to sign now let's take a look at the reincarnated 92 dream team or the dallas mavericks in total 13 players scored and they shot 89 percent from the free throw reincarnated line I don't know what that, he said. The Mavericks didn't do anything super spectacular. Dallas played how they usually play. So this is more of a case of the Clippers just going 12 rounds with themselves, which seems to be the identity of this team and this franchise. Now, if y'all recall opening night last season, we were all jacked up in anticipation of the Battle of LA. The Clippers versus the Lakers. No one really knew it was how all this would play out, but it was obvious that this was going to be the NBA's new premier rivalry. Well, at him. least it was supposed to be. <laughs> and by the end of oh, the first nah. game, the Clippers got the win and they had all the momentum going forward. And then two months later, the Clips beat the Lakers again. And boy, did things get out of hand quick. Clippers fans were ready to place an order for their 2020 championship banner. They were sure of their team's sheer dominance. Game over for the rest of the league. The Clippers are snapping next. In the beginning of the season, I low-key thought that myself too. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. And cash and checks. 
But after a turbulent season, lack of chemistry, and more load management than a garbage man, the Clippers got bounced out <laughs> of the second round of the playoffs in heart-wrenching fashion. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. He on X Games mode. Their flaws were just too glaring to overcome. We've talked about this before. You can't just throw a bunch of talent on a team and expect to win a title. This is not how championships work. Shut up, Warriors fans. Just stay out of this. You need camaraderie. You need chemistry. That's, that's what the Warriors did. You need each and every player to buy into their role and be open to adjustments at any moment. This is what some of us have been saying all along in regards to this Clippers team. Loaded with talent. They've got size and scoring and defense and all of the tangibles you need to go on a championship run. But they are strikingly lacking in the intangibles department. Also, it doesn't help that Paul George either plays like a first-team All-NBA superstar or a nervous <laughs> wreck just trying to keep his spot in the Facts. rotation. So, what do the Clippers do? They spend the offseason resting and reloading. Pandemic P! They part ways with their head coach Doc Rivers and sign LeBron James' assistant coach from the 2016 championship run, Tyron Lue. They sign Serge Ibaka to be their enforcer down low. They bring in sharpshooter Luke Kennard and sign Nicholas Batum. These are all good moves. Yeah, they that's are a good move. deeper and more experienced than last year. And what better way to show off the Lakers got, got better and Clippers got better. That's scary for the league. But I don't know, I don't know what's going on with the Pianos. This would improved roster than by handing the Lakers a giant L on opening night for the second straight season. They're looking cohesive. They've got a new coach who allows players to play to their strengths. Things are looking fantastic. Might as well get those orders ready because we're going to need our 2021 championship banner here ASAP. Wait, I feel like I'm having deja vu. Mm. Like, all of this already happened before. Yeah. Like, this exact same scenario played out a year ago. And that's because it did. It did. See, the problem here isn't the Clippers or Paul George. It's that fans get way ahead of themselves before anything has even happened. More recently, over the past few years, fans have grown accustomed to overreacting to every little thing that happens. It really feels yeah. like if you don't have a knee-jerk reaction on a game-to-game -game basis, yo, yo. I've been thinking about reacting to flight watching Curry 62-point game. Bro, I know that's going to be hilarious. Bro, flight probably went crazy. I'm, I might have to watch that. behind in the news cycle. Paul George hits back-to-back -back threes, and I'll be damned. Pandemic P turned into best shooter in the league. Five minutes later, Paul George airballs a three, and oh wait, <laughs> never mind, he's trash, knew it all along, Lakers in four. There's no middle ground with this stuff. On opening night, the Clippers beat the Lakers just like they did last year. And just like last year, this means virtually nothing for better or for worse. In that game, PG had 33 points on 72% shooting and hit five threes. Everyone was ready to put the Pandemic P talk to bed. Literally, I remember we was literally having a conversation. We was talking about how, how Paul George is nice, so he came out and he's nice. Always, always disciplines, bro. Game was enough to sway people from feeling one way to feeling the complete opposite. But wait, wait! Incoming monumentally terrible performance by a Paul George-led Clippers, and all of a sudden, less than a week later, and Paul George is back to being Pandemic P. Why? How does a player's legacy and ability get dwindled down to good and bad performances on a game-to-game -game basis? Let's be honest, whether Paul George gets 35 and 5 in a win on great efficiency or 10 points in a terrible loss, neither of these performances changes his talent and ability as a player. Yeah. Paul George is an NBA star, and even the best players have bad games. For example, here's a stat line one NBA star put up in a game last week. Bro, this is obviously Jimmy Butler. Like, if you can't tell us asparagus had ass, like, come on. Some fans would even consider this player a superstar. Any guesses on who this player is? Yeah. Two points on 0% shooting in 27 minutes of action. And this My game man's came fresh two, off of three, a four-point just free throws. five days earlier. Could you even imagine the absolute riot people would be having if Paul George put up these numbers? That is kind of facts. I ain't gonna lie because Paul George do get a lot of hate when he performs bad. It's just that he brought it on to himself. Like the whole playoff P thing. Like he brought it on to himself. So whenever he plays bad, they, it's magnified because of that. When you're cocky and you have an ego and you play bad, like 
This is what's gonna happen. But man, I don't know, bro. I thought this was gonna be different, but I guess it's about Paul George all the time. But this has become a staple of Paul George and Clippers basketball. The NBA's metaphorical, and sometimes literal, punching bag. So where do the Clippers go from here? Well, for starters, they need Kawhi Leonard in order to succeed. His presence Facts. is not just necessary, it is absolutely critical to this team's success. His impact on the game goes far beyond what shows up in the box score. Paul George needs to play more consistently, and they've got to build some sort of chemistry as a team or they'll be in the shadow of the Lakers for the rest of eternity. So with that, I'll leave y'all with something I created while they researching for this video. A chart of some of the best NBA players of all time and the worst losses of their careers. Oh, now pay brother. close attention because some of these numbers may just surprise you. Enjoy. And as always, until next time. Alright. Damn. They lost by 52. Cole lost by 48. <laughs> so KD and Charles Barkley have the largest loss deficit in history. Bruh. Kobe lost a 48. 42. Gotcha, bitch. Look at Alice Caruso, man. Inspirational. Alex the GOAT Caruso, bro. Guys, that's my reaction to it's so much worse than we thought. I didn't know it was gonna be about Paul George the whole time, but you know, it's a good video. Uh, Jimmy, he he puts videos together really well. He does great commentator, puts videos together really well. A lot of times you have to guess the topic. See this one, not so much because you you understand what it says, but this one I had no Kawhi is in the thumbnail. I ain't know it's gonna be about Paul George, but thank y'all for watching. If you like my reaction, drop a like on the video, drop a sub on the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.